Welcome back to the Action Network's Euro 2020 Soccer Betting Preview Show. I'm Michael Leboff, the soccer editor here at Action Network. I'm joined by BJ Cunningham of beautiful Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and Anthony DeBundo of Greater Philadelphia. Guys, three matches starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Let's just get right to it. I mean, talk about a headliner. 9 a.m. Eastern, Ukraine, odds on favorites, big favorites to take on the darlings of the tournament, North Macedonia, BJ. Tell us where to go with this one. Yeah, this is a very interesting match because both teams need to win if they want any shot to get to the knockout stage. You know, we watched Ukraine against the Netherlands. Their defense looked horrible. They had a bunch of goalkeeping mistakes. They had to start an 18-year-old at center back who looked like the moment was way too big for him. And the Dutch basically just got whatever they wanted against them. They did have a couple, you know, great moments with the Yarmolenko left foot and then my guy Malinovsky with a beautiful dime off the free kick. Uh but I actually, their, their defense concerns me in this match, even though it is North Macedonia. Um, Ukraine came out in a 4-1-2-2-1 formation, which was very compact in the middle, and the Dutch basically just did whatever they want on the outside. North Macedonia came out very defensive against Austria in a 5-3-2, and I don't think they can really do that again in this match. They have a few guys that can get forward and give uh, the Ukrainian defense some trouble. Elmas, who plays at Napoli, Bardi, who plays at Levante, and Pandev, who obviously scored the goal. I think those three guys can actually give the Ukraine defense some trouble that quite frankly might make a few mistakes. So uh, I'm actually going North Macedonia over half a goal here on their team total. That is a beautiful, beautiful (laughs) bet. One of the best I've ever heard. All right, let's move on. Uh, 12 PM Eastern kickoff Belgium right around odds on at uh, at the open to uh, as favorites over uh, Denmark. They open around three to one. Obviously, a lot to a lot of baggage in this matchup after what we saw with uh, Christian Eriksen in the in Denmark's opener against Finland. Anthony, I, I think Denmark has a chance here. It's a good, I think it's a pretty good price. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, for me, uh, I actually like the total here. I like under two and a quarter goals. Uh, the Belgium attack created about one point seven expected goals, and they they scored three times. But if you really go back and look at the goals, they were more defensive errors than they were. Belgium necessarily ripping this this Russian defense apart. They did create a few overloads, but I wasn't overly impressed with Belgium. They only completed one pass into the penalty area. They only completed two crosses into the penalty area the whole game. Um, They really were missing Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, And there's a lot of concerns with the Belgians about whether or not they're going to have De Bruyne for this game. They might have Hazard off the bench. It seems like uh, Axel Witzel might come in off the bench, which provides some defensive solidity. So I'm not really sold on this Belgium attack. I know how good they were in qualifying, but it really did seem like the absence of De Bruyne hurt them more than I thought it would uh, in the middle of the park, kind of linking the midfield to the to the attackers. Uh, and so I'm a question marks about Belgium, and they're going up against a Denmark team that already had uh, issues up top, uh, you know, in scoring goals and getting shots. Paulson really struggled to, to create space and shots. Jonas Vind really didn't get involved into the game. Uh, they had a lot of low quality chances. They had a lot of en- entries into the penalty area, 14 passes into the penalty area, most of any team in the first round uh, of matches, but they really didn't have that, that final ball there. Uh, and so I'm worried about them against this Belgian team scoring as well. Uh, I think this could be a really low scoring game. I think it's going to be a heavily midfield contested game. The Danes really did a good job of pr- pr- shutting off any counterattacking opportunities from Finland the entire game. So I think they could, if they are able to, rain in Lukaku a little bit this should be a low scoring game BJ what are you seeing yeah I think this match is kind of just to stay away from me I have no problem taking the total here but I personally I I just have no idea where the Danish are at mentally you know I don't think anybody would blame them you know if they come out here emotionally exhausted with what they went through but also I could see you know on the other side of that is them coming out here front foot trying to play for you know Christian Eriksen um and I have you know I agree with Anthony all those concerns with Belgium as well uh, I'm certainly not going to lay Belgium's money line here. You know, it's hard to play the Danish without Christian Eriksen, who, you know, creates everything for them in attack. The only thing I can see playing is here is if Belgium gets steamed towards uh, match time, I'd play, you know, Denmark plus half a goal and anything plus money. But other than that, it's stay away from me. There's also some travel concerns with the Belgians coming from Russia West to Denmark playing in Copenhagen. Uh, it's going to be definitely uh, an emotional scene uh, for the Danes, definitely pre-match and, and maybe even early in the match. Um, so that, that's definitely something that has to be considered. And for the Belgians, you know, with all of these injury concerns and they've got guys who are half fit, half not, I wouldn't be shocked if they even were more conservative in their approach here, 
because they know that a draw is good enough. They're going to play uh, a pretty bad Finland team in the last game, and they're already through to the knockouts. They should win this group easily. So I could see a situation where manager Roberto Martinez is a little bit more conservative uh, in the early moments of the game. Yeah, I have a, I just have a tough time in at home uh, considering the circumstances passing on that Denmark money line, especially if it does if it does balloon up like BJ said. Uh, all right, Austria Netherlands they wrap things up 3 p.m. Eastern. The Netherlands are prohibitive favorites in this one. Austria coming back that's they're going to have a big number next to them. I, I was very encouraged what I saw with what I saw from Austria. Um, there was, you know, a goalkeeping mistake that led to a goal for North Macedonia. I think everything else, obviously they were playing North Macedonia. So you got to take it with a grain of salt, but I thought, you know, this team looked good. They looked cohesive. Um, and perhaps we, you know, we talked about them being a potential sleeper in our pre-tournament preview. And I, I mean, I'm starting to, to believe a little bit, uh, obviously this is a much steeper task than, than, uh, North Macedonia, but, I, I mean, the Netherlands didn't look that great either. So I'm, I'm definitely going to look to bet Austria, whether it's on the money line or one, or one of the derivatives. But I mean, I think that price, uh, if it, especially if it's going to hang around five to one, is is way too good to pass up on Austria in this one. Anthony, how about you? Yeah, the Dutch were, were, were pretty impressive in terms of how they were able to control the midfield against Ukraine. Uh, 92% pass completion rate. It was really uh, impressive. Daily Blind. Frankie de Jong and Memphis Depay was pretty much like just a constant train of ball progression right into the final third of the Ukraine in that first game. The thing is, is that I think Ukraine is much worse at contesting the midfield than Austria will be. Austria had the most pressures in the, fi- in the midfield in the game, most successful pressures. Um, and they really pretty much shut off North Macedonia's ability to progress the ball up the field. So for me, this Austrian midfield of Bundesliga guys, uh, Conrad Leimer, Leipzig, Marcel Sabitzer might have been the most impressive player anybody uh, of anybody in the first round of matches. Seven passes into the penalty area for him alone. He also had that great cross to Stefan Leiner, the right back from Gladbach, who also had a great game. Uh, this Austrian team is just built to disrupt what the Dutch want to do. Uh, and I think this game is really going to be probably one of the more fun ones again. Uh, I cashed to both teams to score. Another one's Ukraine. I'm going back to it again. I like both teams to score. Right now it's minus 110. I like that up to minus 125. I think that the, this game has the potential to have a lot of goals in it. Again, still some question marks about the Dutch defensively, but there's no doubt that Memphis getting running at this Austrian back line could cause some serious issues too. So for me, I think there's going to be goals again, and uh, I'm riding both teams to score. And I might play some Austria, uh, especially if the Dutch get up. I'll look to uh, live Austria because I think this game could go back and forth. Yeah, it does seem uh, to be a game – fueled by chaos. And when I, when I do project a game to be chaotic, I think that usually lends value on the underdog. So that's where I'll be, where I'll be looking. BJ, what about you? Yeah, I totally agree with you guys. Uh, Austria is kind of a wild card when it comes to their formations. Uh, I looked back through their three world cup qualifying matches. And then this match, they've played four different formations. So really they're just going to set up with to how their opponent plays and how the Dutch love to play. As we saw in that first match, they love to play end to end wide open games. That's how they're comfortable. I think Austria is going to really be compact defensively in the midfield. They're going to use, you know, Sabitzer, Limer, and Schlager and have them try to dominate the match and play very defensive and try to hit Netherlands on the counter. So I'm actually going to go with Austria in this one. I'm going to take their spread of uh, plus one. I think anything up to minus 130 uh, is good there because I, I think they're just going to try, honestly, just to sit back and play for a 0 0 draw because a little game theory here is if they draw this match, and let's say Ukraine beats North Macedonia, that final match against Ukraine, all they need to do is draw, and they move on to the knockout stage. So you could see a situation here where maybe Austria is comfortable with you know getting a draw here and then just playing out the final match to try to either win the group or just secure at least a place in the knockout stage. So yeah, I'm going to go with Austria plus one. Yeah, one other thing to note about the Austrians, that both teams were top five in shot-creating actions, which is the, the, the passes and situations that lead to shots. Uh, so, you know, in, in a year where there's not a ton of pressing, there's not a ton of uh, high-flying action, uh, this, this group so far seems to be the one that's going to bring it. Uh, and Austria has the midfield depth to compete with these Dutch because they also have Stefan Sanker off the bench, Baum Gardner. Uh, uh, you know, he can kind of play in a little bit too. So they have a lot of options. David Alaba moved up and down the pitch. Uh, so they have a lot of options that they can go to, to kind of shift tactically to what the Dutch are going to do. Uh, and I think they will be pretty vulnerable to that same 
progression where Depay is just running at the back line. For all the updated information on the Euros, go to the actionnetwork.com and download the Action Network app and enjoy the games.